Okay, now that we have already simulated KLP, KLPP, and freefall motion, yeah, now it's time for the projectile motion in 3D. Yeah, uh, this can also be implemented easily actually by applying an initial velocity or initial force to an object. Yeah, for the sake of the simulation, let's say that our car can fire projectiles when left clicking yeah, or pressing left control. Yeah, this is another example of detecting user input. Okay, let's duplicate the scene from KLPP again now. Yeah, uh, I'll save my exercise one scene. Yeah, but I will duplicate from KLPP scene instead. Duplicate and then rename it as project title. Yeah, now uh, we will create the projectile first. Let's create a new sphere, rename it to projectile, resize as needed, add a rigid body component, and then create a new script. Okay, let's do this one by one. Yeah. Okay, and I will move my uh, scene camera into the front of the blue car, and then I will create a 3D object sphere yeah i will reset it to zero 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 and let's see yeah this projectile is obviously too big for our car yeah so i will scale it to uh, let's half it down a half half and a half let's see i think it's still too big Okay, uh, I will half it again, a quarter, quarter, and a quarter. Oops. Okay, I think I like this size. Yeah, let's assume that uh, the scale of the projectile is 0 0.25, okay? Uh, I will rename the spear as projectile and then resize as needed, add rigid body component, let's do that rigid body uh, for the use gravity now leave it turned on yeah. and then create a new script projectile attach immediately let's do that create c -sharp script projectile Okay, I will attach it and let's edit the projectile script. Yeah, it's actually quite easy. Yeah, we have two public fields here. The first one is the initial velocity and then the second one is lifetime. Yeah, and then we have a private rigid body as usual. In the start method, we will get component and we set the velocity into the initial velocity yeah the new line is this one destroy game object lifetime yeah let's discuss this line first before we type this script into our projectile script okay so the destroy method has two arguments yeah the first one is the component to destroy and then the second one is the delay but it is default to zero yeah destroy method will destroy the component specified in the first argument the component one if it is actually a game object then the game object which script is attached to will be destroyed yeah this is how we delete any game object from our scene during runtime okay the second argument specifies the delay prior to destroying if omitted it will default to zero yeah it means that destroy will be executed immediately. Yeah, if not, then Unity will wait until the delay time has elapsed. Yeah, so for example, uh, if you want Unity to delay the game object five seconds after it encounters the destroy method, then specify five as its second argument. Okay, let's try to type it this script now. 
Yeah, we have a uh, two public fields, public factor three, initial velocity, and then public float lifetime, uh, which defaults to five float. And then we also have a rigid body RP as usual, yeah. RP dot velocity equals to initial velocity, but don't forget to get component first, get component a rigid body, and then we will destroy this projectile after lifetime. Simply call destroy, and then for the first argument, specify game object. For the second argument, specify lifetime. Yeah, this means that uh, five second or any value in the lifetime field, yeah, after our projectile is instantiated, yeah, then Unity will delete this projectile. Okay, as usual, if your update method is empty, just delete it. Yeah, and then let's try to set it in motion. Yeah, reset the project position. Uh, I have provided here. That's fine. Test your projectile. Yeah, specifying the initial velocity to Y and Z. Yeah, let's see if it is, if it is correct. Yeah, we want for our projectile to move in two axes at the same time. Yeah, to create a projectile motion. Yeah, here the projectile will need to move in the y and z axis at the same time. Yeah. So that's why in the projectile or initial velocity, we provide a positive y to be able for the projectile to move upwards and then influenced by gravity it will move down eventually yeah drag down by the gravity and uh, move forward let's say five okay let's test the projectile motion here okay i think i made a very grave mistake here because uh, I haven't opened my projectile scene yeah my currently open scene is actually exercise one okay so I will move to the projectile uh, scene okay I will save this instead yeah and then Ah, okay, never mind. Um, I will use my exercise one <laughs> scene instead. Yeah, uh, for you, please do it in the projectile scene. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I think I am happy with my projectile. Then um, we will create a prefab. Yeah, prefab is a root game object which is stored as assets. Yeah, prefab can be instantiated to spawn it as a game object on the scene during runtime. Yeah, and then uh, any changes to the prefab will be reflected on the instantiated game object. Yeah, you can fix this relationship as a parent-child relation as in OOP. Okay, let's create the prefab for our projectile. Yeah. First, create a prefab folder. Yeah, this is optional, but preferable, yeah, prefabs, so that your assets does not clutter everywhere, yeah. Okay, prefab, and then uh, we, you can simply drag the projectile game object from the hierarchy window, and then drop it on the project window, uh, yeah, uh, assuming that prefabs folder is already open. Okay, let's drag this projectile game object into here in the project window. Yeah, this will create a prefab for the projectile. 
yeah and as you can see now the projectile game object is now colored in blue yeah as opposed to uh, or ordinary game object yeah like the directional light uh, it is colored coded in white yeah but uh, any game object that is instantiated from a prefab is color coded blue okay so instantiated prefab may have their own values of any properties yeah as in the oop yeah uh, the child can always have its own value than its parents, right? Any properties which values differ from the prefab are bolded in the inspector window. Yeah, so for example here, I have the position and the rotation of my projectile is already bolted. Yeah, and I can change it to any value I wish. Yeah, but for the projectile prefab, the value the default value is actually something like this yeah uh, if you want to edit your prefab you can always double click on your prefab yeah or click it once then click open prefab in the inspector window yeah and then modify it as you wish if it is then you can go back to the scene by pressing this little left arrow yeah like this Okay, now for our car to be able to shoot, first we will create a new empty game object as a child of our car. Yeah, this will be the spawn position of the projectiles. Okay, let's do that. Uh, I will move my projectiles again here. Yeah, only as a placeholder. So, um, to illustrate or visualize how my projectiles will be spawned later on. Yeah, and then I will use this position for the spawn point. Yeah, for the spawn point game object position, yeah. Okay, but only roughly because uh, we must create the spawn point as a child of my car KLPP. Okay, uh, with the my car KLPP is selected, just right click and then create empty, rename it spawn point. Yeah, and then position it in the front of your car. Yeah, actually preferably in the same position as the projectile. Yeah, I think uh, they are roughly in the same position. Yeah, so I think that's fine. Okay, then delete the projectile game object. Yeah, we will instantiate it later using script. Yeah, delete the game object, not the prefab. Yeah, if you delete the prefab, you will have to start over. Yeah, so delete the projectile game object. Delete. And then we will need to instantiate a game object. Yeah, prefab is the only way to instantiate game objects during runtime using scripts. Yeah, because prefabs is are stored as assets, then we can use it uh, during runtime. Yeah. So for example, in our case, by pressing the fire one virtual button, uh, it is set on left click or left control. Yeah, we will instantiate a projectile at the spawn point. How to do that? We will create a new c -sharp script named shoot. Yeah, something like this. And let's create it. Scripts. Shoot. And attach it to my car KLPP. Yeah, after Unity has finished compiled the shoot script. And then let's edit our script yeah let's see our this script before we try to uh, type it in yeah we have two public fields here the type is game object yeah the first one is the projectile prefab itself and the second one is the spawn point 
yeah, we need the spawn point game object to be able to determine where we'll, we will spawn the projectiles. Yeah, and then at the update method, we will detect if the user actually presses the fire one virtual button, yeah, which is left control or left click. Yeah. Uh, for the in virtual buttons, you can take a look at the project settings yeah, in the same tab, the input manager. Yeah. Uh, aside of the horizontal and vertical axis, Unity has provided us with some virtual buttons, Fire 1, Fire 2, Fire 3, Jump, and Submit, as well as Cancel. Yeah, if you open Fire 1, yeah, you will see that the positive button is left control and the alternative positive button is mouse zero. Yeah, mouse zero means the left button click. Okay, so we can use the fire button, virtual button here, fire one. Yeah, we can check it. Yeah, if the user presses fire one virtual button by using input.get button fire. Uh, sorry, input.get button down and providing the virtual button name yeah, in the get button down method. Yeah, if it is true, yeah, the user or the player presses the fire one virtual button, then we will instantiate the projectile. Yeah, instantiate method has three arguments. Yeah, the first one is the prefab we want to instantiate. The second one is the position, yeah, where we want to spawn the game object. And the third one is the initial rotation of our game object. Yeah, rotation in Unity is measured in quaternion. Yeah, it is very mathematical, so you don't really need to understand what quaternion is. Yeah. Uh, as a matter of fact, I don't understand quaternion myself. Yeah, but, uh, but we... we only need to know that Unity used rotation as, uh, sorry, Unity used uh, quaternion as rotation values. Yeah. For now, to give no rotation, simply use quaternion dot identity. Okay, let's type this script now. Yeah, we have public game object projectile prefab as well as spawn point. We don't need the start method. Yeah, we can delete it. And then here, detect the fire one virtual button press. If input get button down with the name of the virtual button is fire one, again, you must be very careful with the name of the virtual button. Yeah, you must type it exactly the same as it is defined in the input manager. Yeah, so for fire one, you must type it F I R E with F capital. Yeah, and then here we will instantiate the projectile in the position of spawn point dot transform dot position with no rotation at all. Yeah, so simply put quaternion dot identity. Yeah, that's all. Okay, now go back to the Unity. Yeah, make sure you have saved the shoot script. And then select the mycar KLPP. We must initialize these two fields, yeah, the projectile prefab, provide the projectile prefab from the project window. Yeah, just drag it over here. And then for the spawn point, yeah, just drag the spawn point to this field. Only then you may try to play your game. Yeah, I will uh, zoom out a little bit 
here and uh, I won't move my car for now but I will click it in the game window yes so that uh, you may see that I spawn the projectile yeah if I move then I can also spawn but now my car is rotating wildly yeah and where is it yeah my as you can see here my camera rotates wildly okay that's your game we have provided it yeah if you place the spawn point too close or the projectile size is too big yeah or uh, your car is moving yeah and then uh, the projectile we spawned may blow our car away yeah so we must remove the reaction between my car and projectile yeah how to do that uh, many ways to do that but we will try the simplest one yeah please select the projectile prefab and then search for the sphere collider component and pick the is trigger property yeah any game object with is trigger property is on yeah, means that it will not interact with any rigid bodies when colliding yeah but we can still uh, detect the collision during runtime yeah uh, we will learn about collisions later on yeah not maybe not in this uh, class but maybe in the next weeks or subsequent weeks yeah okay so yeah we have simulated uh, glp glpp freefall motion and uh, projectile motion yeah in the last video we will try to simulate friction and momentum okay we will continue to the next video